What's up everybody, this is your favorite integral solver here on YouTube once again, and today we're going to be doing a differential equation. It's a pretty interesting second order linear differential equation where we have y double prime minus y prime times tangent x plus 2 times y equal to 0. And our methodology for solving this equation involves a very useful technique called Abel's method. Abel, that's how we pronounce it, I believe. Correct me in the comment section in case I'm wrong. So we're going to use that method for solving this differential equation, and it's a very useful one that requires us to first guess what kind of function could work on this differential equation first. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a second order linear differential equation. So there are two kinds of functions that would satisfy this equation. And we make a linear combination of those two functions using those two functions to come up with a general solution. That's how we solve these equations, right? So we need one solution to this differential equation first. And to make an educated guess, let's first expand this tangent term. So we have y prime minus y prime, y double prime minus y prime, that is, times sine x divided by cosine x plus 2 times y equal to 0. So we get a hint here that we might want to get rid of the pesky cosine term in the denominator. So if the y prime term cancels out with the cosine term, that could make our lives much easier. So let's guess or let's try y equal to sine x because that gives us y prime equal to cosine x and y double prime equal to negative sine x. And let's plug in all the stuff into our equation. We have negative sine x minus cosine x times sine x divided by cosine x plus 2 times sine x equal to 0. So we have the cosine terms canceling out. We have negative sine x minus sine x, which is negative 2 times sine x plus 2 sine x gives us a 0 on the left hand side. And we have 0 equal to 0, which is true last time I checked anyway. So this is one of the solutions to our differential equation. Our educated guess is perfectly correct. Now let's call the solution y sub 1. So y sub 1 equals sine x, and we're now interested in y sub 2. y sub 2 is unknown as of now, and we could just guess our way through to a solution development and get y sub 2, and that's one way of thinking about it, or we could solve it analytically using our knowledge of y sub 1. But I'll leave it to you guys watching at home, school, mowing the lawn, cooking food in the kitchen, whatever you're doing right now while watching this video, take a guess as to what would the second solution be. And of course, if you can't guess it correctly, then we have the method I'm going to present to you. So let's recall what the Ronskian is. So the Ronskian is a function w of x defined in terms of the determinant of y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. So we need the determinant whose element of the matrix whose elements are the solutions to our differential equation and their derivatives. So expanding this gives us y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime, y2. Okay, cool. So it turns out that Abel's method requires us to solve a differential equation involving the Ronskian. So we're solving a differential equation inside of a differential equation problem, which is pretty interesting. And the first step to do here is get a differential equation involving the Ronskian. And for that, of course, we have to differentiate the Ronskian. So we have w prime equal to y1 prime y2 prime plus y1 y2 double prime using the product rule minus y1 uh, double prime y2 minus y1 prime y2 prime. So we have some nice cancellation taking place over here, and this implies that our differential equation is y is w prime equal to y1 y2 double prime minus y1 double prime y2. Now at this point, it may not seem very useful to have a differential equation involving the Ronskian, but we do have the second derivatives of both y1 and y2, and we know that y1 and y2 both satisfy the given differential equation. So recall that equation, that is y prime, y double prime, equals y prime tangent x minus 2y. So I could 
just subscript it with one and two and then plug it into the equation involving the Ronskian. So this implies that W prime equals Y1. Now Y2 double prime would be Y2 prime times tangent X minus two Y2. Then we have a negative sign and that's uh, Y2 times Y1 prime times tangent X terribly. Sorry about that. Tangent X minus two Y1. Okay, so notice first up that we would have terms of negative 2, y1, y2, and positive 2, y1, y2. So they just cancel out straight away. And this means that we have w prime equal to y1, y2 prime, tangent x minus y1 prime, y2, tangent x. And we could just factor out the tangent x term, giving us y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime y2, and this thing is being multiplied by tangent x. Now, what exactly is this thing? Recall that this would be the Ronskian. So that means we have w prime equal to w times tangent x, and this, of course, is a separable differential equation in w and x, which is pretty easy to solve. So this implies that we have dw by w equal to tangent x dx, and integrating gives us the logarithm of the absolute value of w equal to the logarithm of the absolute value of secant x plus the logarithm of a positive constant of integration c. And, ju and just for the sake of this problem, I'm going to take x belonging to the open interval between negative and positive pi by 2. That way, we have secant being positive on this interval. So that means we can ditch the absolute value sign for the secant function. And we have the logarithm of c times the secant of x. Okay, cool. And this is equal to the logarithm of the absolute value of w. And on exponentiating stuff, we get w equal to plus or minus c times the secant of x. And of course, we could absorb the plus or minus sign into the constant of integration because it's still going to be a constant anyway. So we have w equal to c times the secant of x. Okay, cool. All of that was nice. That was extremely cool. I mean, we have what the Ronskian sorts out to. The Ronskian is c times secant x, but how is this useful for us? Well, expand the Ronskian, and you'll see exactly why this is such a useful method and a very nice exercise. We have y1, y2 prime, minus y1, uh, minus y2, y1 prime, equal to c times the secant of x. And the left-hand side, that is the Ronskian, looks eerily similar to the numerator of what you would get after applying the quotient rule for differentiation. And let me make this even more clear. If I divide by y1 squared, y because, well, y1 is something given to us, we know that it is sine of x. In that case, we would get the derivative with respect to x of y1 divided by, no, it's y2 divided by y1. And yeah, that's about right. So we have the derivative of y2 divided by y1 on the left-hand side, and this thing equals the constant times secant x divided by y1 squared, which is, again, something given to us. Now, on integration, we have y2 divided by y1 equal to c times secant x divided by y1 squared. And because of integration, we're going to have another constant. So let me just rename this to c sub 1, and I'll introduce the other constant of integration as c sub 2. Okay, cool. So this means... Oh wait, forgot the integral sign. Much better. So this means that y2 equals c sub 1 times y1 times the integral of secant x divided by y1 squared plus c2. And again, we knew exactly what y1 was, right? That was sine x. So that means we have c1 times sine x times the integral of secant x divided by sine square x dx plus the constant of integration c2. And this is a fairly simple integral to evaluate. I'm just going to present the result here and I'll leave it to you as a bit of a side quest. 
Okay, so we're going to let C1 equal 0, no, C1 equal 1 here, and C2 equal 0. The reason for that is, well, we're going to have constants of integration when we're writing out the general solution anyway. So, yeah, C1 equal to 1 is pretty convenient, and C2 equal to 0 is, again, very convenient. So, this implies that Y2 equals sine x times the value of this integral, which is negative 1 by sine x plus 1 half times the logarithm of 1 plus sine x divided by 1 minus sine x. And yeah, I just used Wolfram Alpha for this, but this seems like a fairly simple integration by parts problem. Anyway, so this is good. This is pretty cool because the sine x terms would cancel out. And we have negative 1 plus this whole 1 half times the logarithm thing would be the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of sine x, which looks pretty damn gnarly. I mean, seriously, that looks awesome. So we have y2 equal to negative 1 plus uh, sine x times the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of sine x. And I wonder if anyone got this guess correct in the comments section. I'll check in the comments if someone guessed this one. Wow, that would have been some guesswork. Anyway, so we have both y1 and y2. So we know that the general solution would be a linear combination of them. So we have a constant a times y1 plus another constant b times y2. And just expanding this a little bit, we have, uh -huh. we could factor out sine x terms, giving us a plus inverse hyperbolic cotangent of sine x times sine x, and then we would have a negative b here, which does look extremely cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe. Remember to drop me a follow on Instagram and in case you like the channel and the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.